So today I am in Norway along with my family and the Sony a6700 that I'm filming on right now. The plan is really simple, I'm just going to walk around and I'm going to film as much as I can in the 120 FPS 4K that this camera is capable of doing. And really, you know, put it to the test and see, you know, what it's, you know, what can it do? Is it actually any good? Well, let's find out. By the way, the beauty here, it's like something out of a fairy tale. It's absolutely nuts. And I haven't edited this video yet, but I'm thinking that I might actually be throwing in some uh, drone shots as well, just so you can get a little bit of sense and appreciation of the scale and epicness that is all around me right now. Have a confession to make. This is like actually not recorded in 120 frames a second, but 100 frames a second. And the reason is I live in a PAL area, so my camera is set to PAL, and the maximum there is 100 frames per second. But if you were to switch the camera to NTC, then you can get 120 frames per second. And if you put that footage on a 24 frame per second timeline, you would actually be able to get 5% uh, more slow motion than what you've been seeing in this video. Ain't that something? Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're filming with 100 or 120 frames per second on the Sony a6700 is that it actually crops in uh, quite a bit. As you can see here, here is a 25 FPS footage, and here is a 50 FPS footage, and here is a 100 FPS footage, and there is a quite a crop on it. So, there is a crop when you use the uh, highest maximum, you know, uh, frame rate. However, being able to film 100 or above 100 FPS 4K footage is such a huge upgrade. I mean, I can't even do it on this camera that I'm holding right now, which is only a7 and a4. All right, so it's editing me right here, and I realized that I forgot to mention one thing that I know from experience uh, many of you will be wondering and asking about, and that is, uh, did the camera overheat while filming in 4K 120 frames per second? And the answer to that question is that for me, no, it didn't overheat at all. And I'll tell you why in a second and what I did, but I did do some research on this subject, and it seems that many people are saying, that you can record for up to 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, maybe even more, depending on like what type of climate you're finding yourself in, until the camera starts to overheat. But you see, the reason I didn't feel it overheat and why I don't really think this is a problem at all, is because I'm not filming in 4K 100 frames per second that long at a time. There's no reason to do it really. You're just using this high of a frame rate to get some cool b in between. So you're using it like as a burst. You're filming a little bit here, a little bit there, and that's it, you're just getting some cool shots in between. Now, back to the video where I <laughs> look totally wild. Now, I do need to be honest with you again that I just got this camera in my hand, so at the time of the recording, I haven't been able to review the footage in a big screen, just on a small screen on the camera. And to me, it looks actually pretty good. But uh, I'm gonna let you be the ultimate judge of that question. So, did you think this uh, 120 frames per second, or actually 100, but you know, high frame rate 4K footage from the brand new Sony a6700, is it good? Let me know in the comments down below what you think. But I do have to say that I've enjoyed this camera so much and I actually think it's quite impressive what it can do. And there are a lot of good stuff inside. And if you wanna see everything that this camera has and the full review, then you should watch this video next.